comic book fans, and welcome to another exciting edition of Cammy's A Comic A Corner. I'm your host as always, Cammy. Now, we have a very indie week this week. I mean, I know we haven't done an indie comics episode for a while, but you can probably consider this episode to be one of the few, because all the main titles that came out, all the mainstream stuff, a lot of uh, domination from IDW this week. But let's skip that and go right into the pick of the week. From Image Comics, we have Memoir Number 1, written by Ben McCool and art by Nikki Cook. Now, this is the latest series from Ben McCool and Image. Uh, it's basically, it's black and white, and it focuses on this one town, uh, Lowesville. It, uh, ten years ago, huge memory wipe occurred in this entire town. No one remembers anything. So this one journalist, uh, Trent McGowan, is off to find the story, find out what happened. Is it a giant conspiracy put down, uh, put forth by the town, or did something really happen? Well, as soon as he gets there, it's like the 50s never came, the 50s never left. Very bland, dull, boring town. So pretty much your basic Midwest town. So it's his job to find out and try to get people to talk to him, but they're very wary of outsiders, and no one really wants to help him out. He starts emailing this one person who, who contacted him first, saying, hey, let's meet somewhere, I can tell you what happened, and he's kind of just taken aback by this. But apparently the person he's talking to didn't have his memory erased. He remembers everything. And there's a, a creepy point in this book where someone just starts digging at this one spot, doesn't know why he's digging, but he finds this coffin just full of bodies of women and children. It's just horrifying. And so Trent knows that something is up with this town, and now it's his mission to find this person who remembers everything and see what's up. Gorgeous first issue. Uh, Nikki, Nikki Cook's art on this is very, very hauntingly beautiful in a way where it, it, everything has is just a tad bit off, but it's still just really, it sets the tone of the book really well. And then, you know, Ben McCool, he's, he's filled with all these great stories, and I can't wait to see what happens next in this series, but then future projects down the line. And if Toker ever ends. Now on to The Fast Five. <laughs> First up from IDW, we have G.I. Joe Cobra number 12. This issue focuses on Zamek and Tomax, uh, mainly uh, Zamot though, because he is kind of pissed that Chuckles is being hailed as, you know, the next big thing, the ultimate Cobra Captain America in a way, where he is the perfect Cobra soldier. And so what's he do? He tries to frame Chuckles to make it look like he's the bad guy here, kills a whole squad of Cobra people with his little card saying, look, see Cobra Commander? It, it was him. Cobra Commander was quite aware of uh, Zamat's intentions and says, no, you're an idiot. We knew that you swiped his card. And then when he orders Chuckles to kill him, Chuckles aims the gun first at Zamat and then takes it back at Cobra Commander and BAM! Right through the back of the head. And he's like, holy shit! I did not see that coming! So now it's up to Chuckles as he's going, yo, Joe! By the way, so you know, you thought he might have I mean, been right down deep in the, in the muck there, turned his back to G.I. Joe, but no, no, no. He finished the mission, and now he has to deal with the Zamot and then whoever else might have been nearby to hear the gunshot. Cool, cool, spectacular issue. It makes you makes you miss G.I. Joe Cobra and and then yell Yo Joe when you're done reading it. It's, it's quite remarkable. Next up from Vertigo, we have Hellblazer 275. Now this is the giant wedding issue, and when I mean giant, it really is giant. It's double the pages and double the price tag for sure. Uh, you have Epiphany and and John Constantine marrying. Uh, he's going on the stag weekend, uh, Epiphany's trying out dresses, and then it seems everyone in the universe wants to make sure that this wedding isn't going to happen. John Constantine happy? Not on a couple of people's watches, that's for sure. Evil John comes back and tries to kill him, you know, stay in his place. Nurgle tries to come up and, and destroy the whole wedding because he, want, he was promised a virgin soul. He was tricked out of John Constantine, so now he wants Epiphany. But the ring that John gave her kind of has this protective... Uh, force field around her, and Nurgle can't do a thing about it, as John comes to the rescue and saves the day. It was a spectacular issue. Uh, Giuseppe Camicoli's art on this is, is gorgeous, and he should never leave this title. I mean, I know it's kind of winding down these next few months here, but he does a spectacular job. And then Peter Milligan, bless you, good sir, for continually bringing me great Constantine stories week after, or month after month. Good, good stuff. If you're a fan of John, uh, John Constantine, pick this up indubitably. Next up from IDW, we have Doctor Who number one. Now this is the relaunch, since there's a new Doctor, now we have a new relaunch. And so we have Rory, we have Amy Pond, and we have 
the new doctor, Matt Smith. They are, they, they find the magic phone, well, Rory does, and he tries to check his email, and because the TARDIS has no firewall that's connected to the phone, all these, you know, spam come to life in the ship. They're kind of holograms, there's a stapler asking if you want help, so they need to reboot the system, line on a planet, wait for three hours, but in one hour, unfortunately, on this planet full of holograms, these uh, Scoringers are going to destroy this planet. And so it's up to the Doctor to save the planet, you know, get the Scoringers off his back. And it's a very, very clever issue by uh, Mr. Tony Lee. He really it plays with the whole, you know, all the spam that you see in your own filter. Plays with that, like, how would that manifest in real life? And then he shows some brilliant examples and shows how uh, brilliant the Doctor is as he saves the day. Good stuff. If you're a fan of the new Doctor Who series, this will tide you over until the new series starts this spring. Next up from Dynamite, we have The Boys number 50. Like a milestone issue for uh, Hellblazer, this is a milestone issue for The Boys. If you've been a fan of The Boys for the past 50 issues and started with the Wildstorm uh, saga, like I did, you'll notice that the two covers are different. That's not we Huey in the corner, that is actually Mallory. We get the conclusion of what happened to Mallory, why he's, you know, never seen anymore. But basically, the lamplighter uh, burned his kids alive, or his grandkids alive, and now he wants his own little sweet revenge. The Seven are showing how how far they're willing to go, uh, Homelander in particular, and then it comes down to a kind of a standoff, then a, here, you can have this as compensation, and it's Lamplighter tied up, waiting for Mallory to put a gun and, and you know, a bullet into the back of his head. But Butcher's not happy with all this. He was promised the Homelander, but then it kind of realizes that uh, he was never going to get the Homelander. It was all about Mallory and Mallory getting his sweet revenge, and their funding being pulled also doesn't help. So you see why this team kind of dissolved, but then it's not really over yet. You get interviews with Garth Ennis in the back. You get all these great pinups in the back, and it's quite the bang for your buck. It's a nice little uh, thank you to the fans reading the series this long. If you like the boys, you'll like this issue for sure. And finally, this week from IDW, we have Lock and Key, Keys to the Kingdom number four. Now, we have Rufus and Bodhi. They're playing together. Uh, they are kind of playing... Uh, well, with Rufus, he's always playing with his G.I. Joe action figures. And he's kind of not all there, but there's something special about him. Because uh, when Zack tried to open up the back of his head with the key to, you know, erase his memory, there was no hole. And why can Rufus only see Sam... Uh, Sam Lesser's ghost in this issue. You really you gotta... There's something weird about this kid, but he's gonna come into play later on down the line for sure. Sam Lesser's ghost is talking to Rufus this entire issue, telling him how bad and evil Zach Wells is, and how to dispose of him, involving the Well House and trying to get the Lock kids to help him push uh, him back into the Well House, and that'll, you know, be his demise right there. And, and Zach is, is constantly looking at them, burning eyes and everything throughout this entire time. He knows something's up with Rufus, and then when Rufus tries to explain his uh, plan to Bodhi at the end, he goes, listen, see this little action figure here? That's gonna be you if you don't shut the fuck up. So it was a very creepy issue, gorgeous art as always by Gabriel Rodriguez, and then Joe Hill makes me sad that there's only 15 issues left in this entire series. <sighs> Lo siento, I'm gonna cry. Well, that does it this week for Kami's Comic Corner. If you want more Kami's Comic Corner goodness, head on over to www.kamiscomiccorner.com. From there, you can read the Book of the Month reviews. You can read a new column that I have up, uh, Kami's Favorite Covers, where every month, every Friday, not every month, every week, every Friday, I will be highlighting around five of my favorite covers that came out that week and why you should, you know, ooh and ah over them as well. Also, I have an audio podcast, Geeky Talky, where I update weekly, every Wednesday, something new, comics, TV, movies, etc. Also, if you like any of the uh, titles you've seen me talk about, you can head on over to Rising Sun Creations at rse-online.com. From there, they have the best of U.S. comic books, manga, and collectible toys imported straight from Japan. If you're in the San Diego area, please stop on by their Mission Valley location and give them a whirl. Or, if you're not... You in San Diego, you can check out Rising Sun Creations at rsc-online.com. So that does it this week for Kami's Comic Corner. It's playoff weekend, so I gotta go see who's gonna make it to the Super Bowl. My picks, me being the sports expert here. Should I have a podcast about that? I'm going with the Jets and the Packers. That's my prediction. Will Steelers, you know, overcome and beat the Jets? Perhaps, but because I'm a San Diego fan, I'm rooting for LT and Cromartie. So until then, this has been Kami's Comic Corner. I've been your host, Cammy. Go Jets and Packers! Yeah!